ask yourself, how do you compete with the best customer experiences in the history of the world? Because today's consumer, that's you, that's me, are able to transact better than we've ever been able to do in the history of the planet. Everywhere, except in a car dealership. And we've been protected, we've been protected by the franchise system. So if you didn't buy it from me, you had to buy it from him. If you didn't buy it from him, you had to buy it from her. But we're all the same to the consumer. We haven't had to change. And then along comes this guy, Elon, and Jeffrey, and they challenge the way we do things. And I, I've been saying for five years or more, someone's going to pierce the franchise umbrella with electrification, and when they do that, that's gonna open up the door for everybody else, including the OEMs. You know, let's face it, and I hope there are no OEMs here, I love the OEMs, but the OEMs don't exactly love the dealers. You know what other group doesn't love the dealers? The government doesn't love the dealers. Check with your CFPB, check with your AG, check with your local uh, politicians. They don't love the dealers. And the third group that doesn't love the dealers, the customers. Other than that, we're good. <laughs> Michigan. Of all places, Michigan, Mike, Michigan, Michigan, of all places, allows electrification to bypass the franchise dealer. Who comes in behind that door? Well, Rivian, certainly. Maybe Apple decides to get back in the game. What are we going to do about it? Who can doubt that the game has changed? with Rivian and Amazon coming into the automobile business with what Elon Musk has done. You know, American Honda Motor Company didn't even count Tesla in the ratings up until last week. They were, no, 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 it's electric, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. And when they put them there, they're in third, right, with the, with the new model that they've got coming out. And this guy's moving over to China, he's not stopping. So how do we compete with these guys? Bear, Lyft, Carvana, these companies weren't in business 10 years ago. And now every time they sell a car, it's a net loss for the dealer. It's a net loss service opportunity for the dealer. And don't forget, they're training the customers now. This is how we're doing business in the future. This is what the future is going to look like. And there's no going back. That toothpaste is out of the tube. The customers, the players have changed. Who can doubt that uh, our, our RJ over at Rivian is changing the game with the roller skate and being able to put a platform on top to custom design a vehicle for the end user, completely bypassing the dealer and using electrification to say, hey, you're out, man. You are absolutely out. Jeff Bezos, trillion dollars. He can do whatever he wants, wherever he wants, whenever he wants. Imagine this. He buys, uh, let's see, what, buys Auto Nation. He buys Carvana. And it's a, he writes two easy checks. And he controls new and used across the country with what we call the smile across America. He buys the dealerships from Oregon, down California, down to Texas, right up, well, picks up Florida, because there's 12 seasons there to sell, up to New York. And with two checks that he writes, he controls 90% of our industry. Uh, Mary Barra, well, congratulations, we have a woman at the top. Isn't it her place to be at the top of an automotive corporation? Make no mistake about it. This will change the game also. This is a, a change we can embrace. The customers have changed. They don't understand why they can buy anything and everything they want to buy with their right thumb on a telephone except for service and sales. They don't understand it because we're saying, no, 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 you got to come in, you got to come in. What's the best price on the car? You got to come in. When can I get the car? You got to come in. Talk to my manager. Can you imagine if you went to Amazon and they told you you got to come in to get the price? That's ridiculous. Maybe we'd be like, ha, it's crazy. But yet, in our dealerships, if you call most BDCs, they tell you you've got to come in. So, so. They say the only person that likes change is a wet baby. And there are no wet babies in this room, so none of us like change. But change is here. So what do we do about it, right? And when we fold up our tent, we go home. I am nervous. I've got 100% of my money in automobile dealerships. I'm a dinosaur. And I know what's coming. And I can feel it. I don't want it to happen to me. They say that the um, illiterate of the 21st century will not be those that can't read or write. It'll be those that can't learn, unlearn, and relearn. We've learned. This is our game to win. But we need to relearn how to apply what we know with what's going on to take us to the next place.
information is doubling right now at a speed that's you know, incomprehensible. And many of us are saying, this is not going to happen for a long time. And they asked Bill Gates, what do you see the changes looking like? And Bill Gates said, over the next two to three years, no major changes. In 10 years, you won't recognize the business. And that's irrespective of the industry. So things change slowly, and then they change all of a sudden. How do dealerships, how do we prepare for the future? What if Kodak bought Instagram? What if Kodak, what if the 13,000 people in Rochester, New York said, hey, there's a better way to do this? And in fact, we all know the story that Kodak had the digital technology, and I think in the, in the 80s. And the young person goes up to the board of directors and says, hey, boss, this digital is really great. I take a picture, and we can send it. And, and, and they tell him, hey, let me tell you about what we do, because in case you forgot what we do. We are in the paper and film industry. We're not in this picture industry. We sell paper. We sell film. Get it straight. Can I make as much money by taking a picture and sending it without film, without paper? Son! And, well... No. Well, then get out of here. And the answer was, not yet. Not yet. And, and so many of us are saying, hey, can I make as much money online as I can in the dealership? No. The answer is not yet. How's Bezos doing with online strategies? Pretty good. Apple, pretty good. I'm, I'm sorry, I had too much coffee. <laughs> they asked the CEO of, uh, of Kodak, what happened? You own this. This was your game to lose. And he said, we messed up. But he didn't say we messed up. He was corporate uh, governance. He was honest. We effed up. He said changing and transferring to digital was like changing the fan belt on a moving motor. I thought, wow, that's really appropriate for our business. Yeah, because it's the same thing. How do we transform from this digital, I mean, from this traditional business model to this digital business model? And, and, and people say, hey, Ben Stock, I make a lot of money with the diesel engine. I make a lot of money with traditional. And, and, and so do we. But this is the time now to spin off of that into digital. Because it's here. And we're late. We're late to the party. So what we did is we've got a, a, our sustained business model. And the sustained business model is to get really, really strong at the core functions of the business, right? To get really strong at sales, service, new car, used cars, fixed operations, cost cutting, expenses. Take that money, that additional money that we're making from there, and invest it in a disruptive business model. In 2018, well, let me tell the story about uh, the capital markets, I went to a Google meeting, and those are a lot of fun, because they give you the truth, irrespective of what you believe. And, and, and it's, this article came out, McKinsey is saying the capital markets don't expect the OEMs to make it. The capital markets think that the traditional model is gone. And I don't know, it was a Google meeting, and everyone's kind of googly, and they're having fun, and I'm sitting there going, hey, wait a second, their end of the boat's sinking? I'm on the boat too. And how does that impact us? And then right after that, Ford had their rating lowered to junk. Now, junk's not good. I know that much. I'm not an investment banker, but junk is not good. And how long can they keep feeding that loss machine? I, I, this slide was also from McKinsey. It's talking about contribution to net profit. And I was shocked that financing is going to be less of a contributor to net profit. We already know margin compression for new cars is less of a contributor. But it, of course what they talked about, the place to be is service and parts <coughs> and maintenance are going to be the largest contributors. So I said, thank goodness. Thank goodness we moved there two years ago. Thank goodness we're ahead of this curve. Thank goodness. So your business model, what you and I do in fixed ops is the place to be. But we can't hold on to the way it's been. We can't, because you'll be gone. The machine doesn't care if your daddy was a dealer and your daddy's daddy was a dealer. The game has changed, and you've got to be prepared for that. And by the way, now the spotlight's shining on us. We are going to be the very most important part of the dealership. But are we prepared? <coughs> What's your profit strategy? We looked at the big disruptors. Amazon, Peloton, Uber, Airbnb, and... Um, my dry cleaner. 
uh, they're not quite as well known as, as the others. Amazon. Well, you know, the, you see that little nice arrow, the smile uh, from A to Z, and it's a smile. No, it's a business strategy. He stuck it right in your face and said, here's my strategy. I'm going to take over every industry from A to Z, and that includes you and me. I don't want your dealership. I want your industry. And I'm like, well, okay, that's a little aggressive. <laughs> what was the original name of Amazon supposed to be? Relentless. Relentless.com. And I've got a relentless little thing here to remind me. Relentless.com. If you Google Relentless.com, Amazon comes up. So this was not Jeffrey looking to sell a couple of books. The nice guy. He's looking to take over everything. Uh, next, we've got um, Peloton. I mean, talk about putting the consumer in control, right? And if any, any Peloton people here, I know Curtis, you're a Peloton, I'm a Peloton guy. All right, Peloton allows me to take a spin class whenever I want, wherever I want. I can pick the instructor, I can pick the music, I can pick the intensity, I can pick the time of day when I take the class. I'm never late for a class in my basement, you know, it's a, pick the time. And, and we, so we said, well, that's a pretty cool pattern. Uber, how many cars do they own? None. Uh, they tried that, it didn't work out. Uh, Airbnb, how many beds do they own? None. Yet they're controlling the space. The last little dry cleaner over there, that's my dry cleaner. I have never been to my dry cleaner. They pick up the clothes every Tuesday from my garage and they drop off the dry cleaner that's done. And they do the same thing on Friday. They pick up every Friday and they drop off every Friday. I've never been there. It's not relevant. Unless they completely screw up, they've got me for life. Unless they burn a hole in my favorite suit and refuse to reimburse me, they've got me for life. And we started to think, what's the common thread here among these groups? And the common thread is they've given the consumer shared control of the process. So how do we do that? What do consumers want? They want shared control of the process. They want some control over what's going on. Now, this slide's a little bit outdated. Uh, it's about a year old. Uh, but our industry is a $500 billion industry, and we're only getting 20% of that industry. That screams of opportunity. Um, the, the scary thing is, five years ago, we had 28%. So we've gone from 28% to 20%. That's a 30% reduction in $500 billion. That's commissions you and I are not earning. I wonder why. When you Google oil change near me, do you know how many dealers you see up there? Not a single one. Oil change near me in the New York metro market, the most densely populated market on the planet, or, or in the United States, and there's not a single dealer there. So we forfeited being in the game. We forfeited that. And we said, well, no, no, Ben Stock, I got it covered. Honda oil change near me, I've got those ad words. Well, well, but that's not how people search, is it? I want oil change near me. So, you know, our team put together something we said, hey, we've got 30% market share. We need to be there. If we've got 30% market share, I've got a one in three shot when they do oil change near me. I'm there. But who's there? Those same guys that have 80% of the market. We, it's not enough anymore to have the big H sign outside and say, hey, we're here. Come service with us. Because when customers are searching on a digital age, it's like having no sign at all out in front. They don't know you're there. They don't know how to find you. A little city called Manhattan. And if you don't think disruption's happening, and if you don't think we're a potentially endangered species, Honda dealership, Manhattan, out of business. Acura dealership, Manhattan, out of business. <coughs> Nissan dealer, Manhattan, out of business. Volvo dealer, Manhattan, out of business. Range Rover dealership, Manhattan, out of business. There's no lack of money on that island, but the business model is not sustainable. You can't tie up 300,000 square feet for fixed stops in Manhattan. It doesn't pencil. And American Honda said, we're going to put a dealership in Manhattan. We're going to put another Honda dealership there. And I said, don't do it. We're going to put them out of business too. We're, we're, we're four miles away. They were selling 1,000 cars a year. We're four miles away. We're selling 10,000 cars a year. We've got the strategy. But I said, but I don't want to you know, threaten the OEM. Here's what I'd like to do. Give me two years to see if I can satisfy the service capacity of Manhattan before you put a dealership there. If you do that, I'll waive my, waive my rights under the radius law, which would prevent you from putting another dealership there. Let me see what we can do. 
and we started solving for what we call the Manhattan Project. Now, it's an unfortunate name, uh, but, but that was, that's what we call the Manhattan Project. Um, so we, we went to the team at Google, and we said, hey, man, we're spending a lot of money with you guys. Help us fix this. What's the number one search engine? Google. Google. What's the number two search engine? YouTube. YouTube. Okay, let's change the equation just a little bit. What's the number one search engine for retail? Amazon. Ah, Amazon. And I told the folks at Google this, and we have a couple of former Googles, Googlers here, and we were, we were in Detroit, right, Jeff? And I said, hey, guys, they all have their laptops and their cute and their backpacks and stuff. And I go, what's the number one search engine? They all went, Google, what's number two? And I said, hey, what if I told you it's Amazon for retail? And by the way, you want to speak to me? I'm in the retail business. And I, I, I was audacious enough to tell them why. Google, through search, brings a customer to the product. I search for something, Google gives me a choice. Amazon brings this, the product to the customer. And I said, oh, that's hot stuff. Huh. So what if we brought the product or service to the customer? Trump economy, like him, hate him, it's your call, not mine. But in the past two years, 11,000 stores in the U.S., retail stores, have gone out of business. We've got the lowest unemployment. We've got the highest stock market. We, we, yeah, that's great. I got it. But in, in, in retail, which is we, well, the business we're in, 11,000 stores have gone away. Why is that? I don't know. I'm not a statistician, but, but there, I do see a trend here. <laughs> Amazon's up 1,900%. The other guys are all down double digits. I'd be unemployed if I had 10 years of double digit uh, reduction in business. I'd be unemployed. What's the difference? Amazon brings the product to the customer. Better experience. So we took a look at Manhattan Project, and we said, hey, what if that guy Schultz from Starbucks had to solve for this for Honda? Hey, Schultz, where would you put a Honda dealership? Where would Starbucks put a dealership if they had to put a dealership? Every, Every freaking corner. Right? Well, that doesn't pencil. But wait a second, maybe it does. Because every one of you, sorry, has one of these. I said, what if we could put a Honda dealership here? And then we could have one on, sorry, <laughs> on every single corner in the United States, I mean, in New York, in New York City. So we, we built a, a process, and this was a 2017 version, where we stitched together um, how to contact the dealership, and then we used technology that was already existing, like <coughs> Uber, uh, to show you where we are in the journey, and then we could text you what happened, and we could send you a picture uh, in, in number four of the work that needed to be done, like, hey, here are your brakes, here are new brakes, you've got three kids, wanna buy some? And that's fair, right? Doesn't doesn't Bezos do that? He uses information to sell you stuff. So you say, hey, here are your paper thin brakes. Here's a picture of the lovely four kids. And here are new brakes. Would you like to buy some? And then they click yes. And then you know what you do? You take a page right out of Bezos' book. People who bought this also buy this. Pretty cool. And, and don't we have the data? CDK, don't we have the data that people that buy this also buy this? Not unnecessary service necessary service. And then we use that to help the customers make better decisions. Well, the 2017 version has been updated and it's now all in one app. We stitched it together. And again, we give the customers an experience they're already using. I mean, I, I challenge myself. Bezos is brilliant and I, and I love it and hate the guy at the same time. But what did he invent? Did he invent the internet? No, he didn't invent Federal Express, uh, UPS. All he was gonna buy or build or compete with them. Say, hey, Google, pick up my car. The car, uh, that API ties into the RedCap API, picks up the customer's car, we can service the car, and then bring the car back to them without them ever touching the phone, which we think is pretty hot stuff. It's a little ahead of where we need to be. In the next year or two, every car is going to have a monitor in it where you can talk to the car, the connected car. We are all set for that. But, but the bigger part of that was in building that technology, we came up with what we call the LCD, or the lowest common denominator for service, to pick up to go to a broad base. And then we can build on top of that broad base systems and processes. This is a heat map, and this has been updated. And I'm going <coughs> to ask you to look at two colors. Well, the yellow is when we started out. And you'll see initially there's a lot of activity in Manhattan. And the green is the most important one, customers who come back to the dealership.
we'll take Manhattan. And those greens are repeat customers. Now I've got a couple of things to point out to you that I think is really cool. We, we've, all, we've got, it uh, looks like a, a repeat customer here. This is Rikers Island. It's a prison. <laughs> you talk about penetration. <laughs> My God. And, and our, this is possibly an inmate that's, you know, saying, hey, listen, what you know in advance, prepare for in advance. I'm going to be out in a couple of weeks. Can you get a handle? It's probably a guard. There. But that's Rikers Island. Uh, over here, you see there's not a lot of activity. Well, that's a graveyard, okay? We haven't figured out how to activate that customer yet. We, we leave that to some of the politicians. Somehow these guys can vote, but they, they can't drive. <laughs> I didn't mention the party. I didn't the party. But, but here's the thing with big stops, man. This is cool stuff, right? Take a look at this. This is the uh, Paragon Accurate Service. The average RO inside the dealership, $295 an RO. The average RO, when we pick up and deliver the car, $650. So the average RO doubled. So when you say, hey, can you make money with digital? I don't know. Maybe, maybe twice as much. On the Honda side, the average RO, $278 inside the dealership. Outside the dealership, $566. We, oh, man, that's, that's we think that's cool. After we got together, too. You gotta be careful about this. We got together, with, how much should we charge for the service? And I got together with the service manager, the f &I manager, uh, 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 sales manager, and we went around the room. And it started out $90 lifetime subscription, pickup and delivery. Great. Next one, we went to the sales manager. He said, well, I think it should be you know, $250 and we can sell it. I said, great. I went to the f &I guys, the f &I guys. Twenty-four ninety-five package. <laughs> it comes. It comes complete with a warranty. It's Jim. I'm like, God, guys. I, I, I put my Jeff Bezos hat and said, What would Bezos do? Nothing. It's free. It's free. Pick up and deliver is free. R O L. Return on learning. Which would you rather be? Both are servicing their car. The the, the woman is home on her Peloton exercising, the other guy's in the service department pulling his hair out. I've got five minutes. Give me the five minutes. Um, <clears throat> this is a, out of reverse risk, and we think this is really hot stuff, too. Uh, the, the far number over there on the right with the arrow circle around it is customer pay RO growth. Customer pay RO growth is up 56% in two years. I did not add a single lift. 56% growth in, in the RO count. And from what I understand, the RO count around the nation is flat to maybe 1%, 2% up. Uh, the bottom line there is um, our total fixed for the month of August was $1 million. This is an Acura store. It was, um, we went from not being too good in fixed operations to be, being the number one fixed ops Acura dealership in the United States of America. And we think that's attributable to a lot of what we're doing. Um, 415 percent was that 475 475 percent is the increase in ride count growth. We started out in August of 2017. We had about 970 pickup and deliveries. A year later, that was 1,900 a month, and it's now 3,200 cars picked up and delivered a month. That's a lot of brain damage. Uh, the average RO went up 220 percent. We added 1.3 million dollars in gross up until August of 2019. Everyone, Brian Benstock.